Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 7th of November. India's Mizoram and Chhattisgarh vote in key assembly polls. Next Pakistan PM won't be from Lahore, Bilawal Bhutto takes type at Nawaz Sharif. And IMF says it has yet to see details of debt deal between China, Exim and Sri Lanka. And now for all the details. Two of five Indian states due to elect new legislators this month, Chhattisgarh and Mizoram went to poll on Tuesday, which is being termed as a semi-final for political parties ahead of national election due by May 2024. PM Modi-led BJP and leaders of the main opposition Congress party have crisscrossed the five states, addressing campaign rallies and promising farm loan waivers, subsidies and insurance covers, among others, to woo voters. While the opinion polls have suggested close fights, particularly in the heartland states of Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, two of which are ruled by Congress and one by BJP, the failure of opposition alliance India to extend its unity due to local rivalries is likely to give an edge to the BJP. I came to the vote the first time in Raipur. So, the issues of the colony, the issues of drainage or water, all of them सॉल्व होने चाहिए जो कि घर वालों को घर वालों से सुनो कि ये दिक्कतें हैं वो दिक्कतें हैं तो ये सब सॉल्व होना चाहिए मुझे ऐसा लगता है well, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi met Bhutan's King Jigme Kesa Nagmigal Wangchuk on Monday evening and reiterated New Delhi's full support to the socio-economic development of Bhutan based on its priorities. The two sides agreed on several new initiatives to foster collaboration in trade, technology and cross-border connectivity. PM Modi in a post on X described the meeting positive and valued Bhutan King's vision for development and well-being of his country. Earlier, Foreign Minister S. Deshanko also called on the Bhutan King. The week-long visit comes in the backdrop of reports of China and Bhutan inching towards an agreement to settle their disputed boundary. India and Bhutan enjoy long-standing and exceptional bilateral ties characterized by utmost trust, goodwill and mutual understanding at all levels. Moving on, taking a jive at PMLN Party Supremo and Pakistan's three-time former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, PPP Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Monday expressed hope that the country's next Prime Minister will not be from Lahore. He also hinted that his party will contest the polls on its own in the next year's general election. The comments came after his party this past weekend won big in the by polls held across 14 districts of Sindh. Pakistan has been under a constitutionally mandated caretaker government led by Anwarul Haq Kakkar since August, whose primary purpose is to assist the election commission to conduct elections in February. Pakistan, in the midst of a major economic crisis, has been gripped by political uncertainty ever since PDI chief Imran Khan's government was removed through a no-confidence motion in April last year. And moving on, locals in POK have expressed anger over absence of doctors and lack of proper healthcare facilities in the region, while authorities continue to ignore their plight. A report. Residents of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir have lamented government apathy towards the health sector in the region as they are left to suffer amid the absence of proper healthcare facilities and shortage of doctors. A local said the few hospitals in the region have only become referral centers as they are sent off to far-off places to procure even basic medicines and despite several appeals, the government has continued to ignore their plight. जो यहां के रहने वाले हैं वो भी छाट जो मकामी यहां रहते हैं जो दूर से रहने वाले उनको देख लो कि हाजिरी देख लो वो मौजूद ही होंगे Locals say they have now become increasingly intolerant of the Pakistani occupation as Islamabad consistently maintains a negligent attitude towards the region and ignores even their basic demands 
And the IMF has not yet seen details of the debt deal between the Export-Import Bank of China and Sri Lanka. The fund's first deputy managing director, Geeta Gopinath, told reporters in Beijing on Tuesday. Sri Lanka, mired in its worst financial crisis in decades, has been trying to reach restructuring deals with creditors since last autumn. It was forced to default on its foreign debt in May 2022 after its foreign exchange dwindled to record lows. The island nation reportedly reached an agreement with China's Exim Bank in October, covering about $4.2 billion of outstanding debt. The deal will help the nation to get past the first review of an IMF program and secure a second tranche of about $334 million. So we are aware of uh, the deal that has been uh, agreed on between China Exim and <coughs> Sri Lanka. We are... Uh, we have constant engagements with Exim. We have not seen the details of this yet, but uh, this is again, uh, should come out through our routine engagements. Well, several rights organizations on Monday expressed concern over the situation in Bangladesh and urged the authorities to restrain from action against the protesters from the opposition. In a joint letter, the rights bodies said use of excessive force by government and repression of protest is undermining the principles of democracy. The letter stated government's increased campaign of repression against the opposition is further escalating the situation and exasperating the human rights crisis in Bangladesh. This comes after the government has begun crackdown on main opposition BNP following violent protest earlier this month. Notably, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has been under fire by Western governments who have accused her of authoritarianism, rights violations and cracking down on free speech. And in a gesture of communal harmony, a young Kashmiri Muslim porter is burning the midnight oil, crafting thousands of earthen lamps ahead of Diwali, the festival of lights. Take a look. A young Kashmiri Muslim porter, Mohammed Umar, is busy burning the midnight oil to craft around 20,000 earthen lamps ahead of Diwali, the festival of lights. After completing his bachelor's in commerce, Umar decided to take forward his family tradition of pottery, which is on the decline in the valley. With people adopting eco-friendly ways to celebrate Diwali, he hopes of a good sale. He has already received an order of over 5,000 earthen lamps ahead of the festival on 12th of November. जैसे हमारी ईद होती है हम कपड़े खरीदते हैं कुछ और चीजें करते हैं वो तो हिंदू ही बनाते हैं ना वो हम खरीदते हैं हम मुस्लिम हैं हम उनके लिए दिए बनाते हैं वो हमारा उनका भी रोजगार होता है हमारा भी रोजगार होता है और जब ईद होती है हम उनसे वो प्रोडक्ट खरीदते हैं उनका रोजगार चलता है जब उनकी दिवाली होती है हम प्रोडक्ट बनाते हैं हमारा रोजगार बनता है ऐसे ही चलता है it is believed that millions of lamps were lit when Hindu Lord Ram returned to his kingdom Ayodhya after 14 years of exile, which is commemorated as Diwali. Umar believes that if this craft is revived, the problem of unemployment will cease to exist in Kashmir. जो कश्मीर में जितने भी आर्ट है बहुत सारे आर्ट है जो खत्म हो गए अगर उनको जिंदा करेंगे रोजगार बेरोजगारी खुद ब खुद खत्म हो जाएगी जब हमारे आर्ट इधर कश्मीर के आगे आएंगे well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see the same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.